always keep trying to get his daughter to come on to Fast and Female, but I mean. Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm Allison Baver, and I'm here with Liz Steven, and I'm so excited you're here, not only because you were on the Olympic team with me in 2010, <laughs> but because you're one of the best athletes in uh, the cross, cross country skiing. So I was hoping that you could tell me a lot more about how you climb, because I hear that you're one of the best in the world. <laughs> how does that happen exactly? <laughs> oh, well, so I grew up as an alpine ski racer, so I didn't actually do as much climbing um, growing up on skis as I do now. But um, I, uh, I was a runner my whole life, and I really loved the endurance aspect of sport, um, which Alpine gave you the rush of the speed, which I really craved when I was a kid, and not really so much as I get older. <laughs> but um, but I didn't feel like I was really uh, really tapping my endurance potential um, and love for it when I uh, w w before I switched. And so um, I switched to cross country when I was 15 and fell in love with it. It like it matched my running um, kind of love for running uh, very well. And so yeah. So you enjoy that endurance I, pain. I, I enjoy Enjoy the endurance pain. Yeah, exactly. So that's how you do it. You just <laughs> bear through it and fight yeah. through it. Yeah, you know, I think there's kind of almost a um, that we only get one race a year that's that's solely uphill. Most of our courses are, you know, you have to be good at everything. You have to be good at the climbs and the downhills and the cornering and the flats. Um, but we have one race at the end of what we call the Tour de Ski, um, which is basically the ski version of the Tour de France. Um, and you've done success. You've done extremely well at this event yeah well read. yes I have um, <laughs> it, it was uh, it was one of my best events uh, a couple years ago um, which is it, we do seven races in nine days and the last stage is um, a, an uphill climb um, and you go up a ski mountain they even set gates uh, but we go the wrong way. We go up the hill. <laughs> um, and so you yeah. get to the top of the mountain. And Without gravity. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so I actually think there's kind of a simplicity in climbing. Um, you just one foot in front of the other, and it's not constantly changing uh, technique and where your power is going and everything. You're just, you know, it's one it, there, all you have to do is get to the top. It's pretty simple in my mind. So, uh, so That's yeah. It's hilarious, it's, by the way, that you think of it like that. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I, I, I love it. It's, it's really so, do. and it's that's such an athlete mentality to just break it down to like the most simplistic thing yeah. to execute it. So now here we are, a few months away from the yeah. Pyeongchang Olympic Games. <laughs> You've been to two Olympic Games already. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about those? moments for you like what your favorite moment was of one of the Olympics because we do have the Vancouver Olympics in common yeah and I know that was an awesome game just because it felt a little bit close to home yes so for you um, I wasn't in 2014 is there a best for you yeah you know it's kind of um it's maybe a little bit of a bittersweet memory um, but uh, my teammate Keegan Randall um, we had kind of been talking about before this how uh, sometimes the Olympics feel hard to just focus on the sport um, and there's so much else going on that it, it tends to be a little bit challenging um, even if you perform every other weekend through the year to actually put your results together um, at the Olympic Games and my teammate Keegan Randall had won every single skate sprint um, that season up until the Olympics as as well as um, the prior two years she had been the best sprinter in the world so she had wow. two sprint globes already was on her way to a third one and we had her event the skate sprint at the Olympics and it's in with our sport we have six events every year but we have two different techniques and so every other Olympics the techniques change so you really get one shot at um, the skate sprint if you only go to two Olympics. Um, That's not fair. It's not fair, yeah. <laughs> We're working on changing that. But um, but so Keegan uh, showed up the day of her event, um, and she uh, she didn't even make it through the quarterfinals. She barely qualified. Um, it was kind of unheard of. Um, and instead of um, kind of the entire she was she was the one to win the medal everybody in every nation knew it and when we're out watching her at her event um, the whole stadium went silent it was really an eerie thing um, and everyone kind of was like now what you know now what do we do but that's sport you know you and and she is better right. than anyone well, I've ever you met can do the same thing every day yep. day in and day out but one day yep 
it's all down to one day and it doesn't yeah maybe one day you're off yep you know yep and instead of just kind of walking away and sulking um, we had one of our younger athletes who was having the race of her life and Keegan Aww. walked through the media did what she needed to do and then proceeded to spend the rest of the day um, coaching and helping Sophie get through and she had her best event and was sixth in the spr skate sprint um, after you know at her first Olympics well, you um, know what, but you know what is really interesting about this like the Olympics like the Olympic yeah. Committee like their mission or their motto or whatever is more based on like consistency of performance yeah. it's not really on gold medals although the Olympics the Olympic Games itself is very gold medal focused so yeah. and then I agree with you it always like throws your season off because it's at a different time of the year than most of the world championships or yeah. you know the trials are a different time so your peaking is different yep. is that a similar for you in your sport like how is that going to pan out this season for you yeah so it's similar in terms of when our championships usually are we usually have championships in february um but it is it definitely is um it's a diff it's a little bit different going to the olympics for sure it is more of a um everybody's focused on medals and um and obviously there's only three medals to give every every event so it's hard to win them for sure um but i think as always it's the pursuit of the medals it's not actually taking them home yeah and um, you know what is also interesting to me is athletes are i mean there's the Muhammad Ali type athletes, and then there's athletes I feel like you who probably don't give yourself enough credit for your performance <laughs> <laughs> and, and like to talk about their, you know, their teammates and whatever. But back to you. So when it comes to uh, your performance this year, yeah. you know, especially because you're experienced, yeah. you're now a veteran, <laughs> and. How, how, how do you feel going into this season? Yeah, I'm really excited. I think this will, um, this may be, you know, my last, my last games, most likely. Um, and uh, I feel really excited. Um, and I feel like I, I know, I being, having, having gone to two, um, <laughs> I feel like I should really know kind of what they're about. And of course, everyone's different. Um, but it, I'm, I'm more just excited f to perform at the games. Um, we have a uh, very good um, chance at winning a medal in the four by five kilometer relay, which is uh, which has been a dream and a goal of our team for a lot of years. And so um, that's kind of maybe my biggest focus right now, and making sure that I'm on it for uh, if I can be for that day. So. so yeah, what are you doing exactly like right now? So it's summer. Yep. So what's your training like and how are you mentally preparing to be on the podium in Pyeongchang? Yeah, um, well, that's probably a, that's a long-winded uh, answer probably, <laughs> but right now we're doing, we, we started our training season May 1st. Um, we kind of get April to recuperate, and we do a lot of roller skiing on the road, so I'm sure a lot of people have seen us out there. We've um, definitely seen you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't all get us, sorry we're in the road. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, and then we are doing a lot of running. Sometimes I do some running races, um, and then I'm actually heading to Norway and Sweden on Sunday for some roller ski racing and then training with the Swedish national team for a couple weeks so that's uh, that's the that well, just it's nice to change it up a little bit you know it's a uh, it's their football over there cross-country skiing so it's uh, it feels like a big deal and it's kind of fun to change it up in the middle of the summer sure yeah so will you be back here in Park City before the Olympic Games then or yeah so we actually leave in November um, for the season and so we're over in Europe um, from November to March and so I won't actually be in Park City before the Olympics but I'll be here up until October training and then return in April so <laughs> when is your trials or did you you t like is there a tryout there's um yeah so we have u.s nationals um which i actually won't compete at it's at the same time as the tour de ski and so our first qualification is kind of uh world cup points so okay. we race the world cup season and then if you score some points you're automatically on the team and so oh yeah it's just easy breezy it's easy no, breezy no, yeah. no <laughs> right. problem right exactly. no <laughs> well thank you very yeah. much liz for being on the show we're going to be interviewing a bunch of great athletes uh, coming up in the next hour, so stay tuned.